Prince Harry under pressure as petition over royal titles signed by thousands. A petition signed by more than 27,000 people is putting pressure on Prince Harry to voluntarily give up his royal titles. Lady Colin Campbell, author of Meghan and Harry, The Real Story and other books, started a petition inviting Prince Harry to voluntarily ask the Queen to put his royal style, titles and rank into abeyance. Launching this online petition, Lady C claimed relinquishing his titles would free the Duke of Sussex from constitutional conflicts and would allow him to indulge his personal beliefs as a fully private citizen living in the U.S. with no official links to the royal family. The description of Lady C's petition explained, as a purely private citizen, with no royal rank, style or title, he will be able to indulge his personal beliefs, as is the right of all private citizens, without the consequential possibility of damaging the institution of the monarchy or relations between friendly powers, and will be free to articulate beliefs, no matter how objectionable, without the fallout that is otherwise inevitable as long as he possesses royal status. This petition does not call on the Queen to act but, rather, on the Duke of Sussex to ask her to put his titles into abeyance. This move, Lady C wrote, would resolve conflicts that would otherwise be inevitable. She said, his invitation to the sovereign, being of his own accord, will resolve conflicts that would otherwise be inevitable, and will permit him to enjoy the credit of having put both national and international interests above his own, personal ones, in the process gaining him respect that he otherwise will not enjoy. The royal commentator believes Prince Harry, by giving up the royal titles, would choose a dignified solution. She told the Daily Star, it is a dignified solution for all concerned. To humiliate no one and protect everyone. I think it's a humane way of solving a very regrettable situation. Losing his titles would not damage Prince Harry's post megxit life and work, Lady C argued, as she believes he is big enough as a brand he does not need to be called a duke and would simply make it clear he is speaking and acting as an individual rather than a member of the royal family. She said, it is the best solution because it frees Harry to be able to indulge himself without consequence and without doing damage to the institution of the monarchy of the British nation, the British people and himself. So from that point of view it frees him and he is big enough that he doesn't need the royal title, he's gone beyond that, he doesn't need them. They are shackles that he could well do without. He doesn't need them, he is too big for them now. Prince Harry and Meghan officially stepped down as senior royals at the end of March 2020. While they can no longer represent the Queen and the Crown with royal duties and visits and return their royal and military patronages, they have retained their full titles. However, prior to stepping down, they were asked not to use their his, her royal highness, HRH styles, and have abided by this demand. Over the past few months, Prince Harry and Meghan spoke publicly about their mental health, their life as members of the royal family and their struggles within the palace. During their landmark interview with Oprah Winfrey first aired in March, Prince Harry said he decided to leave the firm as a senior royal because of a lack of understanding and lack of support. More recently, the Duke of Sussex accused members of the firm of total neglect when he and Meghan asked for help in the wake of intense online abuse. Harry launched this accusation during the docuseries The May You Can't See which was released on Apple TV Plus earlier this month. During an episode of the podcast Armchair Expert, he spoke about the U.S. Constitution's First Amendment while he was discussing the media feeding frenzy, saying it was bonkers a remark which attracted the criticism of several Americans, including Texas Senator Ted Cruz. In the run-up to last year's presidential election in the U.S., Meghan and Harry had spoken about the importance of voting and rejecting misinformation and online hate. Their remarks led Republican Congressman Jason Smith to write an open letter to the British government in which he said that, by allowing the Duke and Duchess of Sussex to retain their titles while making political comments, Downing Street was effectively condoning interference in the 2020 United States presidential election from officials at the highest level of the British establishment. 6.30am Update, Royal Etiquette Laid Bare by Former Butler Never ignore a child who calls out to them. Royal tours often involve walkabouts, 
where members of Britain's first family go to meet and talk to their adoring fans. In all aspects of royal interactions with the public, strict etiquette rules apply. Those hoping for the opportunity of a quick chat with their royal heroes should pay heed to advice from a former butler of Prince Charles. Grant Harold told Business Insider that people should never shout out to a royal or initiate conversation. Instead they should wait to be approached and spoken to, if they don't want to be given the cold shoulder. However, he admitted that royals always have a soft spot for children. The ex-butler said, I have never seen a member of the royal family ignore a child who calls out to them. 4.10M Update U.S. Backlash Against Doll Harry As Americans Grow Fed Up Of Duke's Endless Revelations Americans are becoming fed up and tired of Prince Harry's relentless revelations about the royal family, according to a royal expert. There is a growing backlash against Prince Harry in the U.S. following a spate of U.S. media appearances. Talk radio royal correspondent Rupert Bell revealed that Americans are fed up with Harry endlessly complaining when he has more money than he knows what to do with. This comes as the Duke of Sussex again spoke with Oprah Winfrey in a follow-up to his Apple TV show on mental health. Talk radio host James Max suggested that there are only so many interviews you can do with Oprah before it becomes tedious and dull. 2.48M Update Camilla secretly reveled in Meg's drama before Meghan and Harry escalated claims. Camilla was said to be secretly reveling in the drama of Meg's before Prince Harry and Meghan Markle escalated proceedings with their explosive claims about the royal family. The Duchess of Cornwall has remained tight-lipped about Prince Harry and Meghan Markle ever since the Sussexes stepped down from royal life. But Camilla no doubt supports her husband, Prince Charles in his feelings of bewilderment over his son's repeated jibes at the royal family. The Duke of Sussex recently claimed that his childhood suffered as a result of the scars Charles bore from the way the Queen and Prince Philip brought him up. When Meghan and Harry first announced their departure from the royal family in January 2020, a royal source told Radar Online that Camilla had secretly reveled in the drama. 1.00M Update Queen hurt and angry as Harry continues to speak about private lives of royal family. Queen Elizabeth II and the royal family are hurt and angry by Prince Harry's comments about their private lives, a royal expert has claimed. The Queen, 95, has remained silent following numerous attacks from Prince Harry as royal expert Katie Nichol claimed Brits are frustrated at the royal for his indirect criticisms of the royal family. The Duke of Sussex, 36, spoke in detail about his history of trauma and anxiety in The Me You Can't See, on Apple TV+. Harry accused the royal family of total neglect in the mental health documentary series with Oprah Winfrey. Speaking to Entertainment Tonight, Ems Nichol said, I absolutely know that it is the case that Prince Harry is committed to raising awareness about mental health. He and Meghan have made this one of the raison d'etre. Presenter Hallie Stevens added, a source tells ET that the royal family remains hurt and angry as Harry continues to speak about private matters publicly. 12.10M Update, Prince Harry and Meghan left royal family for same reason the Duke split from exes. Prince Harry's prior relationships may have signaled the royal's departure from the royal family, a commentator has claimed. Prince Harry, 36, dated Cressa de Benes and Chelsea Davy before marrying Meghan Markle, 39. Speaking to Channel 5 documentary Harry and Meghan, Three Troubled Years, Viscountess Hinchingbrook Julie Montague said the two girlfriends did not want to marry into the royal family. She questioned whether their reasons for not wanting to be tied to the royal law are the same as Harry and Meghan's for leaving in March last year. Ms. Montague said, We know that Meghan and Harry's relationship was somewhat of a whirlwind relationship. But if you look back at Harry's prior relationships, Neither of those girls wanted to commit and now you're wondering is that the exact same reason that Harry and Meghan have now left? Because of these exact reasons these two prior girlfriends did not want to marry into the royal family. 10.41pm Update, Princess Diana's friend spots pioneering similarities with Meghan Markle. Vocal coach Stuart Pearce, who trained Diana for her public engagements, spotted many similarities between Meghan and Diana. He said the first similarity is that both women set out to speak her truth, 
with Diana in the Martin Bashir Panorama interview and Meghan in the Oprah Winfrey interview. He told The Sun, Diana was decades ahead of her time, she changed the world with hope, empowerment, kindness, and authenticity. He added those qualities are something he sees in the Duchess of Sussex as well. 9.15 p.m. Update, Prince Harry torn apart over wrong claim about brother William, doesn't feel trapped. Royal author Penny Jr., who wrote Prince William, the man who will be king, has since disputed Harry's claims, as she said William is unlikely to feel trapped as he is embracing his role as future king. She told The Sun, Harry is absolutely wrong. I don't think William feels trapped at all. I think he absolutely gets what his destiny is and he is embracing it. He is modeling himself on his grandmother the Queen. Speaking to Channel 5 documentary Harry and Meghan, Three Troubled Years, Viscountess Hinchingbrook Julie Montague said the two girlfriends did not want to marry into the royal family. She questioned whether their reasons for not wanting to be tied to the royal law are the same as Harry and Meghan's for leaving in March last year. Ms. Montague said, We know that Meghan and Harry's relationship was somewhat of a whirlwind relationship. But if you look back at Harry's prior relationships, Neither of those girls wanted to commit and now you're wondering is that the exact same reason that Harry and Meghan have now left? Because of these exact reasons these two prior girlfriends did not want to marry into the royal family. 10.41 p.m. Update, Princess Diana's friend spots pioneering similarities with Meghan Markle. Vocal coach Stuart Pearce, who trained Diana for her public engagements, spotted many similarities between Meghan and Diana. He said the first similarity is that both women set out to speak her truth, 
with Diana in the Martin Bashir Panorama interview and Meghan in the Oprah Winfrey interview. He told The Sun, Diana was decades ahead of her time, she changed the world with hope, empowerment, kindness, and authenticity. He added those qualities are something he sees in the Duchess of Sussex as well. 9.15 p.m. Update, Prince Harry torn apart over wrong claim about brother William, doesn't feel trapped. Royal author Penny Jr., who wrote Prince William, the man who will be king, has since disputed Harry's claims, as she said William is unlikely to feel trapped as he is embracing his role as future king. She told The Sun, Harry is absolutely wrong. I don't think William feels trapped at all. I think he absolutely gets what his destiny is and he is embracing it. He is modeling himself on his grandmother the Queen.